Hello, welcome to week four. It is uh, time for us to start thinking about our first project. Um, you'll find the project assignment in week four under uh, the first document that's listed there. Um, and we need to think a little bit about why we're doing a, a project, why this is an important act in philosophy, and then what the project is, how to accomplish it. So let me just start with why a project. We could take a philosophy course where we just did quizzes and exams and maybe had you write a term paper, but I prefer to think in, about doing a, an interesting project that allows you to be more engaged and interested in what you're doing, but also might allow us to be a little more creative and reflective on the philosophy that we're reading. So we're gonna uh, start thinking about this project right now. Um, the project will be due uh, for a workshop like the first or second week of October. And then that means we're going to be looking at it together, thinking about what you've done and how you might revise it. And then the final draft of the project will be due at the end of October. So let's take a look at the assignment. I was told when I first started doing uh, PowerPoints a long time ago that you shouldn't put a whole lot of words on a screen. Well, here we are. There's a this is our project for the class, so there's a whole lot of words here on the screen. But really, I'm just showing you what's already posted in our site in our in our weekly work on Moodle. This is uh, project number one: sharing philosophy. Now I know you can read this, but you know it is a lot of words. So I thought I'd read it to you, and then we would talk about some of the elements here, and then break down uh, those elements a little further on on other slides. So here goes. There is a mode of philosophy that takes as its primary function the sharing of philosophy. That is, there are a number of philosophers who read, study, and write about philosophy with the sole goal of learning and sharing what other philosophers have said. Now clearly, those philosophers have their own ideas and particular interests, but they largely just use those ideas to help focus their study and teaching of philosophy. And this happens, I'll just stop here for a second. This happens in multiple ways. It happens in, uh, in you know, reference materials that people create for philosophy. Our textbook is a form of that. Um, it happens with philosophers who just kind of repeat what previous arguments were and then and then apply them to the modern day. It happens, uh, my, my dissertation advisor, uh, uh, one of my, um, most influential professors that I've ever had was a philosopher who took other people's philosophies and he kind of blended them together to create something new out of just those core arguments. What, what we're going to do is do something similar to this. For our first major assignment for the course, we are going to practice that, that study and sharing kind of philosophy. In order to do this assignment, you will select a philosophy, select an audience, and then reinvent that philosophy for that audience. So the idea here is that you're going to use one of our texts that we've had this semester, and you're going to create a, something out of that text. You're going to reinvent it for a different audience. Your first task is going to be select to will be to select one of the following texts from our class. Hooks's Will to Learn, Riles, Descartes, Smith's, Ponty's, Man Seen from the Outside, Ansel Dua's La Conscienza de la Mestiza, uh, Antony's No Good Reason, Buchek's when, faith is where is, when is Faith Rational, and Buber's I and Thou. We haven't gotten to a couple of those texts yet, but we will get there before this assignment is due. You'll notice that I haven't included Plato or Descartes or, or Frederick Douglass, and that's because in the past, when I've done this assignment, most people picked those three texts. Um, because those were the most obvious. Those are the ones that are most frequently written about. Those are the ones that people really know a lot about. And the, the other ones that people would pick would be um, ones we're going to read this week, which is Pascal and, uh, and the Five Wagers, Aquinas' Five Wagers. So I select, selected these texts because they are less frequently written about than the others we have read and are therefore more in need of reinterpretation for audiences. If none of these texts floats your boat, you can select another text from our Norton textbook, but you must clear that text with me before you use it. 
You may also use the other texts we've read as you develop your project. In fact, some of these texts may require you to write about more, our more common texts as you discuss the texts you have chosen. For instance, you can't talk about Ryle's Descartes myth without talking about Descartes. After you select your text, reread it frontwards, backwards, right side up, upside down. You should select a reading that you basically understand and one that has a philosophy you care about. You can like it or hate it, but having a strong feeling about the work will help you care about how you represent it. Get to know the philosophy deeply, not in a Sparks Notes way, but in a way that the expert gets to know a, a garden or a car engine. Examine it, dig deep, take it apart, put it back together, learn how it works. Then, after you get to know the philosophy, I want you to consider an audience for, with whom you'd like to share it. Who needs to know it? Why do they need to know it? What seems most important for them to learn about it? How will they best learn? How will they react to it? Your audience should be specific and limited. You should know things about them, about the audience, and you should be able to have contact with them. In other words, don't pick the Democratic Party and Joe Biden, because you would never talk to them. Um, it's too big. It's too wide, at least at this point in your academic career. So just pick somebody that an audience that you know you could you could contact or th that you know would be interested in what you have to say. After you figure out your audience, consider what you want to say about the philosophy to your chosen audience. What seems important to you in your experience and your audience and their experiences? What have you seen in this philosophy that others might not see? What does your audience need you to show them? Why are you the person to reveal this philosophy to your audience? What will you add to the philosophy itself? After you figure this stuff out, develop an argument, claim, thesis, so that you can point it to exactly what you want to say in your project. Finally, after you have your philosophy and your audience, and you know what you want to say, you'll then figure out, need to figure out how you will share the philosophy. What mode of sharing will help your audience understand the philosophy in the way them, that you want them to understand it. Will they read an essay? Will a documentary film help them? Should you write a series of blogs, create a game, write a dialogue, build a website? How will you mix your way of sharing things with your audience's needs and the philosopher's ideas to create a moment of sharing? Ultimately, this assignment is about the choices you make as a philosopher, writer, and creator. You must create this project aware of those choices and be able to justify those choices, both by the work you produce and how you explain your cho choices to others. So, people like to have a clear set of guidelines of what you need to do. Here they are. In order to do this assignment, you will need to meet the following requirements with the understanding that you'll be, held, that you'll be graded on these requirements. First, show that you have a deep understanding of one of our readings through your reinvention of that reading in a new medium. Two, create your work for a specific audience within a specific genre. Three, present work that shows effort, care, and academic integrity. You may not use AI, ChatGPT, etc., or other sources of work, or, or other sources to do your work for you. Students who are suspected of you having used unsighted sources or AI will be required to meet with me to discuss their work, or they risk receiving a failing grade on the project. The work in your project should be carefully done fully cited, clearly presented, and be equivalent to the work one would put into a five-page college-level paper. And let me just stop there for a couple things, because there's a couple things going on in that requirement. First, you got to do college-level work here. you got to do serious work where you're really considering this material and presenting something that has some substance. So if you think about what you would do for a five-page college paper, well, that this work has to be equivalent to that. But then second, you cannot use uh, other people, other uh, devices to create this work for you. For you, This must be yours, and you must be able to justify it as yours. In the past couple years, I've gotten into the practice of if I suspect a student has used AI, or if, they, if I suspect that they've plagiarized or they've had somebody else do their work, then we will have a conference, I, and I will, we will talk about it, and I will ask you questions just, just to make sure you've done the work. So we, you've got to make sure this work is original to you. Number four, be able to justify and explain your choices in a post-assignment reflection that will be coming to you later. The reflection will be worth 20% of the overall project grade. And I'm just going to ask you to be able to say why you did things. What, what did you do? How did you do it? Why did you do it? 
Number five, post your work in a pre-date, pre-due date workshop by uh, the 16th of October. Um, and then we'll figure that out later. And then revise and submit the work to be graded by me uh, by October 30th. Whew, that's a lot of talking. It's a lot of words on a page. Uh, but it is a college assignment, and college assignments do tend to be more complex in the way they're presented. Now, you may have done uh, English 131. You may have done some other courses where you've had to do complex assignments, or maybe not. Maybe this is your first complex college writing assignment or college creation assignment. That's okay. I'm not stressed out. I don't want perfection, and I don't want, I don't want you to be able to do a doctoral dissertation right now. I want you to do an interesting project that you, you show that you're engaged in. Let's think about a little bit how that will happen. So uh, this is a little bit of a sloppy slide. Um, I've been, I was playing with slides today trying to get them done, but I just decided to go with what I had rather than trying to figure it out a little bit more. So here it is. Your core assignment. For your first major writing pro assignment of the cor course, we're going to practice and study and sharing, sharing kind of philosophy. I don't know what happened to the words there. In order to do this assignment, you're going to select a philosophy, select an audience, and then reinvent that philosophy for the audience. So this is just reviewing what we just looked at. You must pick one of these texts. Now, what do you do? After you've picked one of these texts, after you've figured out what you want to, um, that this is the text you want to work on, what will you do? Well, over here on the left-hand side of the screen, you will select your text. You will build an understanding and analysis of that text. You will figure out your audience. You will figure out what you want to say, your argument, and then you'll figure out the genre that you're going to write in. Those are the things you must do in this assignment. That's how you will plan what you're doing. It's laid out right there. Text selection, understanding and analysis of the text, the audience you're writing for, the argument you're going to create, and your genre that you're going to write in. And then that moves over to what you're going to be graded on. You're going to be graded on how you reinvent the philosophy, you're going to be graded on whether or not you write for an audience, a specific audience, whether or not you write in a genre and you know what you're doing with that. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect in that genre, but it does mean that you, you've made a choice. You're going to be graded on your originality and your integrity. Uh, you're going to be graded on how you justify the choices you make and your workshop and revision. It doesn't really work as a rubric, and I don't like grading according to rubrics, but those are the things that you need to accomplish in order to get a good grade on this. Let me just say, as far as grading goes, I want everybody to get an A. As long as you are genuinely dealing with the basic assignment here, and you're base following the basic guidelines, there is no reason you shouldn't get an A. It's when, when people get stressed out or when they put it off or when they don't focus on what they're trying to do and then they, they let other things in, uh, take over their work, that's when people don't get an A. It's all about you being involved in your own think, reading, thinking, and writing. We know what you got to do now. We know what you're going to be graded on. Let's think a little bit more about who you might write for, how you might write it, and what um, what kind of genre you might pick. So, I I just did some random brainstorming here. Uh, first, let me explain the images. Um, the first is uh, um, Beyonce's song, Freedom. Um, and that might be, in a way, a type of reinvention of Frederick Douglass's uh, Life of Frederick Douglass, where he talks about the ways that a slave freed their mind. The second comes from uh, The Good Place, um, and uh, it's uh, um, the character, what is his name, Chibi? Chibi, I think, uh, presenting ethics through Socrates and Plato and Aristotle. So the, the, um, the, cave reading that we did. And then the, the cartoon on the bottom right is Descartes, reinvented for modern philosophy 2.0. As you're thinking about this, I want you thinking about who you're writing for and how who you're writing for will affect what you write. So let's say you want to write for a college group, the Young Republicans, or the anime club here on, on campus. Or let's say you wanted to write for non-philosophy students to explain philosophy to them, or for your church members, or 
for anorexic teen girls, just to get really specific, or for kindergartners or union members who are out on strike right now, or for your job coworkers or for your academic peers, you need to select an audience, a specific audience to whom you have access, to whom you want to write. And think about as you picked one of those different audiences up there, the philosophy that you picked would change. If you were um, trying to present uh, um, Descartes' uh, ideas about how he justifies his own existence, if you're talking to young Republicans, it's going to be very different than if you were talking to kindergartners. Now, how will you pick this? Or how, how, what will you do with this? Well, you'll put it into a particular type of writing. And there, this, this, this little bullet list here is just part of what you could do. There are many, many options here. You could write a comic book. You could create blog entries. You could create a podcast, a documentary, a TED Talk, create a video game or the plans for a video game, do three different TikToks, uh, write a detailed lesson plan, write an academic essay, write a song, create a sermon. I don't, it doesn't matter to me what genre you pick. You just need to create, create a genre that is meaningful to you and meaningful to your audience and that allows you to cover the philosophy. So, how are you going to approach this? Well, the first thing I would do is review the, that list of readings. Which one has appealed to you? And if you're somebody who has not yet started reading for this class, which is the case for a few people, uh, maybe do some reading. Read one of the, the assignments and, and see what you would do with it. So, first you need to do some reading and some thinking about the reading. You need to really uh, start to pull it apart and build a mastery over it. One of the things we don't often ask students to do is to build this kind of mastery. Sometimes we just let them go and write things without really considering why it's meaningful. I want you to, to have some kind of mastery over this text you pick and then figure out so that you can figure out why it's important for an audience and, and how it's important in a genre and what you can say with it. After you're, you've done that reading and thinking and planning for creating a project, then create. Create something that is meaningful to you and to your audience. In my English 131 courses, I, I teach English 131, as, as you know, and in, in my English 131 courses, students often get uh, approach the class like, say, a junior in high school or a senior in high school, where they just do the work because somebody told them to do the work, or they just pretend to do the work because somebody told them to do the work. That is not the case with a philosophy project. It's not the case for an English 131 project either. But I want you to make sure you are engaged meaningfully with this project, because if you're not, your work will show it. So. Then after you've done your reading and your thinking and your planning, it's time to create. Create something that's powerful and meaningful for you. Create something that you care about. And then after you've created this, you know, it's not like you're creating you're creating brain surgery here and that anybody's gonna die when you create something. After you've created your project, we're gonna share it and get feedback from other people in the class who are also creating projects. We're going to think about how these projects are working as a public document created for an audience. And, and we're going to then think about, uh, about how it affects that audience or how it might affect them differently. These are all things that philosophers do. They read and study. They create. Uh, they read and study and break things apart and figure out what they want to do with them. They create. And then they share and, and, and think about their ideas and how it affects others. And then they reflect and they revise. They take what they've done and they develop it further for the audience that they want. You're going to engage in that process in this assignment. For me, that process is the most important thing about this assignment. Your, your product that you create, the, the project that you develop here, yeah, that's important, and I hope you I hope you enjoy doing it. I hope you create something that you feel is meaningful and that other people feel are, is meaningful. But ultimately, for me, as the instructor of Philosophy 130, 
my hope is that you are engaging in a process that is meaningful, that you are able to capture something here in the work that allows you to feel like you are philosophizing. One uh, further suggestion here is uh, to think about where you might go on this campus for more help. One place to go for more help is me, of course. Contact me. Let me know if you've got questions. Let me know if you want to come in and have a conference. I'm always happy to do that, to talk about your work. But another place you might go is the Writing Center. You've got a very old picture of the Writing Center here. Um, uh, the Writing Center looks a little bit different now, but it's in the same place. This is in our Eshelman Library uh, on the first floor, right to the left of the doors when you walk in. Go to the Writing Center. Use it. It is for all students. It's for the community to use to talk about their writing. And they will talk to you at any stage. You can go there tomorrow and show them this assignment you've got and say, I don't know what to do. And they'll help you talk, talk, talk you through it. You can go there next week with a whole bunch of notes that you've taken over one of the readings. And now you're trying to figure out what kind of audience you want to write for. And they'll help talk you through it. You could go there with a draft of something you've written, an introduction, or the first part of a draft. And they'll help you talk you through it. You could go there with a finished draft. And they'll help you think about what, whether or not this is accomplishing your goals. The Writing Center is a really wonderful space on this campus. And it will help you out a lot. I recommend highly that you use it. You can see the information for the Writing Center there on your screen. This is a this could be a fun project. It could be an interesting project. Um, it could also be a really painful project if you don't get started until October 15th. Get started now. Think about what you want to do. And we'll be using the class time in the next couple weeks to talk about this project more. Let me know if you have any questions. Have, have a great time on this project. See you in, on Moodle.